Now then, welcome to my first vlog of 2024. So let's start by saying a happy new year to all of you. And as you can see, for once I'm not on the bank, I'm actually at home, because it's that time of the year when I take a look at some of the new items of tackle that I'm going to be using in my fishing. And this particular vlog always takes me quite a while to put it together. I've been doing them now for two or three years. And you're probably going to be watching this towards the end of January, early February, that's when I'm hoping to get it out, but I'm actually filming it in the Christmas break. I've been at home now for over a week, so I'm desperate to get out of the house. I want to get an early start on this one because I'm getting followed around by the mop and the hoover. You know what it's like, guys, when you've been at home for too long. <laughs> but I'm at the top of the garden and I want this to not just be a plug fest about these items. I want to give you a good insight into them, telling you the things I like about them and maybe one or two of the things that I don't like about them because some of these items I've been using for quite a while now so I've given a, a really good thorough testing at lots of different venues and also keep watching because I'm going to be doing a really good giveaway in this vlog whereby somebody is going to get their hands on a full range of carp fishing gear but I'll give further details about that later on in the vlog because let's get cracking on the first item which is the XO Plus Bivy from Avid Carp. I've been using this bivy now for probably three or four months at lots of different venues i've given it a really good thorough testing and already it's getting some really good reviews out there i've just seen in the latest issue of carpology this particular bivy has been voted the best bivy of the year so i know there's going to be a lot of you out there wanting to have a really good look at this bivy so without further ado let's get cracking and get unboxing a brand new bivy and taking a look at it from scratch Up, it's worth taking a look at the bag because if you've put up as many bivvies as I have over the years you'll know that a bivy bag is definitely not a bivy bag and with this one it's clear there's a lot of thought gone into it because traditionally you can never get a bivy especially a wet one or a frozen one back into the bag once it's been used and you're always rummaging around for your pegs your poles etc but with this one we've got some nice little pockets on the outside which keeps things to hand there's actually three different pockets there's a long one down the side which i think has got the storm poles in yes it has there you go and the one at the front here i think this one's got the bivy pegs in there they are nice looking pegs as well good quality and then this one i think it's got the ground sheet in so let's unzip it there you go now it's not just on the outside where there's a lot of thought gone into this bag, it's also on the inside because, especially as, as I said earlier on, when you're putting away a wet bivy, oh, it's a nightmare. You know, the other day I put away a frozen one and it's always, let me just get this zip open, it's always tricky, but with this bag, when the bivy's frozen, you've got these little clips on the inside here which really do make the job a lot easier. I'll look at those again in a minute but there is a look down the, the bag itself with everything nicely compacted in but as I say we've got these two little clips here which really do come in handy with packing this bag away because you've got the bivy in there you then try and force the zip down it won't go but by clipping these two clips into place let me just clip it into place you can't see there it brings the zip much closer together makes the whole process a lot easier as I'll demonstrate now. <clears throat> I'll do it one hand if I can. There you go. Dead simple. So we've taken a look at the bag. Now let's take a look at what you actually get for your money. Starting off with the pegs and I think you get 15 of these. We'll actually count them. There you go. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And fifteen. Now they're pretty strong pegs those are, and pretty standard, the sort of pegs you get with most bivvies. Got a little bit of a grip pattern at the bottom, which makes them a little bit easier, and gives them a bit more grip for screwing into the ground. You've also got a ground sheet down here, which is a heavy duty ground sheet. If I can get it out this uh, bag with one hand, 
of this pocket, I should say. There you go. We'll take a closer look at that when it's up in a minute. But as you can see, it is made of a heavy duty material, standard sort of ground sheets that you get with all Avid bivvies. And this pocket down here, you've got the two heavy duty storm poles and you've just got a little velcro strap holding both of them into place dead simple right let's open the bag up I'm doing most of this one-handed so it shows you how good the zips are right let's just get that other storm pole out the other side now inside then, you've got various different bits and pieces. There's the main bivvy itself. There, you've got a mosquito infill panel, which we'll come to in a sec. That, I believe, is the vapor skin. Going over the top to turn it into a, a dual layer bivvy. And this item down here is the front zip-in panel. So, I'll spread these items out so we can take a look at everything that's in the bag, all lined up. And there it all is, laid out on the ground. Left the bivvy in the bag, and as you can see, the bag itself, when you take everything out of it, apart from the bivvy, there's loads of room in there. That is a big bag. And believe me, I've used this bivvy when it's soaking wet and when it's frozen and it is possible to get that bivvy in there with these items zipped up nice and easily so you just have to take my word for that i'm now going to set the bivvy up and i'm going to talk you through how you do that because this is the quickest setting up bivvy i've ever used it really is simple and that's the main asset behind it that's why it's winning awards as the best bivvy of the year because it is a very very fast direct shelter as we'll see now there you have it then there is the stripped back version of the shelter and it's taking me probably no more than two minutes to put it up and that's the first time it's been up as well so bearing in mind you get out the bag, you get the, the poles into place and get it pegged out. It does take a little bit longer the first time you do it. Second time I do it, it'll be a lot quicker. I'm a syndicate lake, only a few months ago, it was chucking it down when I got there and I got it all set up and in place in probably just over a minute. It's that quick and it's that easy to do. I will talk you through the process in a moment. There's the centre boss, which I'll, I'll look at in a second. But as a stripped back shelter, that is absolutely ideal for short sessions. I don't know what it weighs at the moment. I'll give it away in a short while, but that's going nowhere. That's rock solid as it is, and I've not got the storm poles in place. And I think I've used all but two of the pegs. I think they're the only two spare pegs that I've got. So I think I've used 13, and I've used all of the different pegging slots. Yep. Now, bearing in mind, I've not got the infill panel on in the moment. I will do in a short while. But as a strip back shelter, that is absolutely lovely. It really is. There's loads of room in there. And obviously, you've got these, these vents at the side that you can, can open and close, depending on the weather, give you a bit of airflow in the summer months. There's one at the back there as well. Well, two at the back, I should say. Another one around this side. And inside the bivvy, itself there you can see there's the mosquito mesh for the infill uh, for the side side vents but you've got these two little pockets there's one this side ideal for your your phone your wallet and stuff like that and there's another one down here as well but that is a really big shelter very very roomy and uh, yeah i love it now what i'll do is i'll unpeg it all and i'll show you exactly how we put it up because the center boss and the way these arms click into place is definitely worth talking about because it's these that make it such a fast direct bivvy now this is going to be right. pretty tricky for me to show you exactly how this works because i'm not using my head cam i don't get as good a quality off me gopro as i do this camera but basically what i've done is i've unplugged these two front poles and 
I'm left with this center boss and these five main arms which all click into place. Now if I pull this center boss up, that releases all of these arms so they close down. Okay. Sorry about that, drop the camera and the bivvy. Problem we're doing filming with just one hand, but there is the center boss. And what you've basically got is these five legs, which are all opened out at the moment, and the way they operate is with this mechanism here, which I'm doing one-handedly, you can just see. That's how easy it is to do it. I'm holding the cam with one hand, pulling that back, and just clicking it into place. Okay, so all five legs have got that same system. So to pack it down, all you do is pull that out, pull it back, and you do it to all five legs, and it packs away. Okay, so we're opening it up, lifting the bivy up, bearing in mind doing this one-handed, and it's not that easy one-handed, but it's a lot easier too. So <laughs> let me just fold that out. I think what I'll do is I'll stick this on the wide camera so you can see a little bit easier. All five of them are done. There you go, come out of breath. And then you pull them back so far and they just click into place. And this little lever here just clicks down and that's what locks the five arms into place. So that's now rock solid and it's going nowhere. So all I need to do is take these two front arms and then poke them into these little slots here. And you can see there's just a little tooth on each one there. It just fits into the little gap there. So I'll put the camera down and get that in place and we'll start adding the bits and pieces to it. There is the XO Plus all set up. I have put the ground sheet in place, clipped it into place in the usual standard positions. There's a clip at the back there. You've got a clip in the corner, two down here at the front. Same on this side as well. And that fits nice and comfortably. You've also got this little panel here, which you can take in or out, depending on what the conditions are like, whether it's too wet and muddy, and um, you don't like having mud inside the bivy. I know a lot of anglers don't like that. Personally, I don't really care about it. I've got the infill panel on there as well, and I've got the storm poles in place, and it's just gonna have to take my word for it. That bivy is going nowhere. It is rock solid. And I've used this bivy set up in quite a few of the storms that you've seen hitting the country over the last few weeks. I can't remember which one it was, but I was fishing on a, a pit over in Nottinghamshire, and there were some serious gusts that day and throughout the night as well and I put some Instagram footage up of it and I know it's been seen quite a few times but that will give you some sort of idea what this bivy is like. It really does stick to the ground really well, it's really aerodynamic and it's suitable for all conditions and I have tested it, tried it and had no problems whatsoever with it. So the door, right, as with most bivvies nowadays, there's lots of different options with this door, but some of the little features that I do like about it is that you can not just zip it down from the top to the bottom with it completely filled in like that. You can also have it, where's the other zip? There it is. You can also zip the top down leaving you just with that little bit of a protected area at the bottom, which I just love, especially when I've got a dog. It makes sure that she can't get out of the bivvy and she's in there at all times. It also means that if you've got a bit of wind coming from one direction and you wanna get a brew on or whatever, you've got a little bit of shelter down there. Obviously you need another peg just to, to stick it in there to keep it nice and tight. But there's loads of different options. You can also, with this, have just one side up and one side down, which I will just demonstrate now. 
Now that is very useful when you're fishing in conditions where the wind is just coming from one particular direction and you don't want to move the bivvy. Obviously I'm holding this camera with one hand again and uh, you can just roll that up. I'll show you a picture of it all rolled up now and with that pegged out in place and it gives you an idea of what sort of options you've got. But all in, it really is a great piece of kit. The only other thing that I need to show you now is with the mosquito panel on the front and also the skull cap in place on the top to give it that dual layer protection. So I'll just put the camera down and I'll show you those different bits and pieces in place now. Right, there's the skull cap in position. Out of breath again. Dead easy to do though, just unroll it. You've got these two little arms which come with the skull cap on this side, one that side if you can just see them. And these two arms slot into the front of the storm poles. That creates the tension at the front. And then all you do is go around the bivvy and you've got these little straps which go through these little slots on the tension arms. Tighten them up. I think there's five of them. Yep, yeah, one for each of the legs. And there you go, all set up. Twin skin protection in a very lightweight bivvy. And as I say, you get all of this completing your setup. So hopefully that answers all your questions to do with that. But the one question you're gonna be asking me now is how big is the bivvy itself inside? So what I'll do is I'll strip it all back again. I'll go and get my bed chair. We'll stick it inside and we'll take a look at it when it's all inside and hopefully give you an idea of how big this particular bivvy is. Well, people wonder why we need so many videographers at these fishing companies. I can tell you it really isn't easy doing these product videos. I've been doing this all day today and the light is drawing out at the moment so I've got to be quick. But there you go, there's our biggest bed chair. That is the Benchmark X in place. The bivvy is stripped back so it gives you some sort of idea of how much space you've got and the bed chair isn't touching the sides. Got space down the bottom, over the back, at the head end and obviously down here as well. Loads of space to put your luggage and if you add the skull cap on, obviously you've got a little bit more protection out here, sort of eight inches or so. So that gives you more shelter from the elements. But the other great thing about the XO Plus is it is quite a high bivvy. And I'll just put the camera down, I'm just gonna stick it on a pod, and you can see how much room I've got inside there with me sat down on the bed chair. Where are we? Can you see me? So there we am, sat on the bed chair, looking out of the water, or the garden in this case, and I've got loads of space all around me. That's something I absolutely love with the bivvy these days. I hate these low profile shelters, which just give you backache because you can't see underneath them. But with this one, you can see everything. It's nice and comfortable. It's easy to set up and you get loads of different options as a standard package. This is called the XO Plus Bivvy. It's by Avid Car. You can get further details on their website and it's now available in all Avid Car stockists. And I think the price is around 499. So under 500 quid, you get everything that we've looked at today, which I think is pretty decent money in today's climate. And all that's left for me to do now is to get this packed away, show you that it all fits in the bag and then what we're going to do is stick it on the scales and give you some sort of idea what it weighs when it's all packed away. Right, I've stripped it back. We've just got the shelter in here with the pegs and there's the scales on zero. So we'll stick it on and see what it weighs. That is about 26 pounds all in, so about 12 kilos. Right, it's fully loaded then. Got everything in here, exactly what we saw right at the beginning. And again, scales are on zero. Up she goes. And this time we have got, um, about 16 kilos, so about 35 pounds. 
All in. I nearly forgot. So just to finish, and I've already said that, but I mentioned right at the start, I wasn't just going to talk about the positives of these products. I was also going to mention some of the things I don't like about them. But having used this beer at so many different venues in so many different types of environments and conditions, there isn't many things I don't like about it. But if I was being picky, then I would say I don't like the fact that there's two different infill panels. I prefer a combined mosquito mesh and the full infill panel, which we've seen on some of the previous Avid Bivvies. But obviously everybody does things in different ways. Everybody likes different things and the guys down in the office have decided to go with the two different infill panels. But I'm going to finish now with a few stats for you to look at and then we'll move on to the next product. We'll have a quick look at a few smaller items now, starting with the Thermite soft shell hoodie. It's hard to make someone my age look cool, but I love this top. Whether it's going down to the lake or going down to the pub with the missus, I really like wearing this item. Made from windproof soft shell, it has a full length zip with pullers, soft fleece lining throughout, zip chest pockets, and subtle avid styling. The RRP for this item is $49.99, and it comes in a variety of sizes, starting at small, right the way up to triple XL. I've used a lot of head torches over the years and until recently I've not found one that I really like. Well, I've just got myself one of the Fox International Halo head torches and I can honestly say it's head and shoulders above any that I've used before. It's got four different settings, three brightnesses and a flashing mode and it's easy to operate by a side button. It features an adjustable elasticated headband, a rechargeable battery which is supplied, a USB charging cable and a rear battery case. Now despite the case appearing quite large, the headlamp only weighs 190 grams and it's a really comfortable fit. The RRP on this great little torch is $69.99, which might sound pricey for a head torch, but when you consider it's fully rechargeable and you don't need to keep buying new batteries, it's money well spent if you do a lot of night fishing or camping in general. Right, when you do as many nights on the bank as I do, every now and again you need yourself a new bed chair. So uh, I've got myself one for this season. This is the Benchmark Ultra. Now it is a little bit used because I've been testing it now for probably three or four months or so and there's a few marks on there because obviously I've got the dog with me but it's a lovely bed chair there's a lot of new upgrades to this bed compared to previous benchmarks and I'm going to talk you through the main ones now and the first one is to the outer bag of the system this particular bag is a little bit different to previous systems because the top material is a lot more lightweight it's got a like a peach skin type material which is really soft and obviously it makes the bag a lot more comfortable well, the second change is to the legs because there's a larger spring in these legs now and that has improved the tracking and it also stops the legs from dropping out when you don't want them to drop out. Third change is to the frame, which you'll see here, that the hinge has been improved and strengthened. And the final change is to the lumbar support. You might remember that previous benchmarks had the elastic going around the frame which created the cushion effect well that's been done away with and we've now got what's called TLS which is threaded lumbar support which has made the bed a lot more firmer hopefully giving you a much better night's sleep price wise you're looking at 499.99 for the X which is the bed that I've got here and 459.99 they're the RRPs for the two styles of bed and I use the X wherever I go and I do a lot of overnighters and yes it is a big bed chair it's quite heavy but I think the fact that I use it wherever I go even for short trips that tells you what I think of it so have a look at it in your local Abbey stockists Oh, it's absolutely freezing at the moment. We're a few days on from when I did that last bit of filming and it's about minus three or four now. So cold hands, cold feet, cold face. If I stumble more words, which I'm probably going to, you know why. So we're gonna move on to a high-end item now, which is the new Elevate Rods, which is this rod I've got in my hands here. And you might remember last year when I did this kind of vlog, I looked at the Exodus Pro, which is a rod at the opposite end of the scale. A budget rod, priced at about 40 or 50 quid. Ideal is your second set of rods because at the time I was using the amplifiers, those are my go-to rods, which I was really happy with, but those particular rods are quite stiff, and I myself like a much more forgiving rod, something which is better suited to all-round fishing, which is what I tend to do, and this is where the Elevate rod comes in. Now this rod has been designed by Tom Forrester, 
and Tom's been with Avid now for about four or five years and he's now the brand manager. It's fair to say that during that time Tom has been instrumental in bringing all of the different rod designs to the market. He likes long range fishing, he's an exceptional angler, anybody who knows him knows that he fishes a lot of the day ticky walks in the Shropshire area. He does a lot of long range fishing on some of the Shropshire meres. He's seen lots of different rod designs and blanks and you can be sure that this rod has been well tested before it's hit the market. I can't speak, I'm so cold since it's hit the market. Now I myself have been using them for about four months now, probably even longer than that. I think they first featured on the Avid channel in the Stickney Brit Pit video, which was with myself and Greg Ellis, which was back in the summer. And since then I've used them on lots of different waters, including my Lincolnshire Syndicate water, which needs a lot of long range casting, up to about 30 wraps with 0.4 line and three and a half ounce lead. So they've really been tested there. Also, I've tried them overseas, places like Salagu, which is a real hardcore venue. So they've been put through the paces and, you know, I'm really, really happy with them, really like them. They're much more suited to the all round type of fishing that I do rather than just the long range fishing but they are also suitable to that long range fishing as well if needed but uh, what we'll do now is take a look at some of the features on these rods and talk you through them elevate rods feature the thinnest lightest and most powerful blank that avid carp has ever produced utilizing cutting edge carbon technologies they've made the rod have an ultra fast recovery which adds distance and accuracy to the cast despite their impressive casting capabilities however these rods have been designed with plain fish in the forefront of the design their smooth and responsive yet powerful action allows for an increased sense of control under the tip, offering the necessary cushioning to prevent hook pulls at close quarters. The rod's aesthetics are functional and stylish, featuring gunsmoke metal finishings, American Tackle TI forged air guides and ultra powerful slim XK carbon blanks. They are made from a 1K carbon wrap and feature 6 guides ranging from a 50mm butt ring down to a 16mm ceramic anti-frap tip ring. They have a Fuji 18mm DPS gunsmoke reel seat, shrink wrapped handle with flared butt, gunsmoke cone butt capper finishings and feature understated graphics. There are four rods in the range which have an RRP of 179.99 for the 12 foot 3.25 and, and a 3.5, and an RRP of 189.99 for the 12 foot 3.75 and, and an RRP of 199.99 for the 13 foot and 3 quarters. A look on the net already shows some excellent deals on them, with Bobco tackling off them as much as £20 cheaper than the RRP, so it's definitely worth having a shop around for them. I'll repeat what I've already said about these rods, I've given them a thorough testing on lots of different waters, so we'll finish now with a short film of them in action when I recently landed some lovely fish to mid-30s. Here we go then, playing a, a fish with the 12 foot, 3 and 3 quarter pound Elevate rods. Lovely plain rods, perfect for plain fish under the tip. This is quite a big pit that I'm fishing at the minute, but they're suited to not just this kind of venue, but also really small pits as well. And they're definitely very nice. Not sure you can see. The action on the rods very well because this is, this is a GoPro that I'm using and you tend to get that that fish eye effect with a GoPro that fish eye effect gives it a little bit of a, a weird look about it but you can see there's a nice little curve to the rod a lot of giving these rods which is definitely something good when you're fishing for for bites you know lots of small hard fighting fish and there's quite a lot of them in this lake Well, there's a lovely example of a 
car caught on the elevate rods, caught on the 12 foot, three and three quarter pound. That's a 33 pound common, Robin Nottinghamshire. Absolutely lovely. So that's it, that's a look at some of the main upgrades I'm going to be using this year. All I need to do now is give you details about that competition that I mentioned earlier on in the film. And this is to win a full cart fishing setup. It's a load of my old gear that's been gathering dust in the garage. There's everything there that you need, apart from alarms. There's rods, reels, buzzers, bed chair, bivvy, luggage, clothing, loads of end tackle, some of which has been never used before. Some items have been used only once or twice and one or two of them have been well used, but everything's in working order, and I know full well somebody will make great use of all of this gear. So all you need to do to enter this competition is the usual format, you know the score guys, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and comment below telling me why you think you should win these items. So, uh, and I'm not posting them out, so whoever wins this gear is gonna have to arrange a convenient pick up point between where I live in Yorkshire and where they live. We'll meet halfway, something like that, but uh, there's loads of stuff there, and I know full well you'll love it if you win it. So, uh, yeah, have yourselves a great season, catch loads of car, and uh, I'll see you very soon for another video.